guys, Ash here coming at you today in Watcher of Realms. Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel, welcome to the game, heck! If you're new here, I am Ash, I'm your mediocre YouTube host here. I will be covering this game uh, extensively on the channel. In fact, this is part one of the beginner guide. I started to record a longer guide and I'm like, man, I'm throwing too much info at the viewers here. So I'm gonna break it up. This is gonna be kind of a start here, get you kind of oriented with what everything is in the game and what you should be focusing on. Name a few kind of interesting heroes to focus on in the in the game as well uh, and then we'll get way more in depth more granular uh, in terms of all the strategic elements of every area of the game in future videos specifically one video hopefully by the end of the month here so welcome again I'm Ash I've been doing YouTube for about 10 years start with Clash of Clans on Clash with Ash YouTube channel moved to Raid Shadow Legends uh, and now I've kind of branched out all over the place I'm Boston based and uh, you know I love as you can tell probably I love chatting I love a little chit chat with my with my audience this game's awesome i played a lot of gacha games out there a lot of hero collectors a lot of champion collectors out there and they, they throw a lot of resources at you uh and it's not the same old same old it's tower defense but with that fantasy kind of gotcha mechanics that we all are, are probably acquainted with but if you're not no worries i got you i got you okay so first things first just follow the tutorial like any other game right try not to go crazy buying stuff even if you're a spender right because at least me i kind of want to know what things are before before I just spend blindly okay with all that being said is I guess we'll start with the type of heroes in this game right there's there's four types and it's very intuitive it's very basic so let's just take a look we have the marksman the mages the endurance which are the defenders and healers and the melee attack so the fighters the the melee dps right so ground units so ground unit defenders healers are you know range units uh ground unit fighters mages aoe magic right and marksmen uh you know usually single target you know uh, higher damage that's it in terms of the type of, of of heroes that we can collect inside this game and the good news is is starting out and this is one of the best things about this game is everybody's gonna get access to some really good heroes on your first polls, right? You're gonna get one of four uh, epic marksmen in this game, and they're all good. They're all good. So you're gonna, I got Brienne, there's there's Tazara, Luriel, Theron, and uh, that, well, that's it, and Brienne. So they're all fantastic. You can focus on them, especially in the early game. You're also gonna get Voltus. I'm gonna show you Voltus really quickly here, just to call out a few heroes that you're gonna be acquainted with pretty, uh, pretty early on. Voltus is very good, very good. He's rare, uh, he's he's a great starter, but I'm sure he can ride you into the mid and and maybe even the end game as well. So you can focus your attention on him. Uh, great mage, you want, want that AoE and splash damage. And I guess that's gonna be the, the first point that I wanna bring up inside this game. And that is uh, DPS is king or queen inside this game. Meaning that you really wanna start pouring your resources into, once you identify, and it could be one of those epics that I mentioned, right? If for me, it's Iona. She is unbelievable, unbelievable DPS. So you can see she's level 60 up in the upper left-hand corner, right? And I threw everything into her because she's so good you know so uh i didn't want to show you an entire battle but you guys can see i mean if you're brand new to the game it's you know you can see these tiles that you're that you're able to put your uh, your heroes on uh here's a fighter for example he's gonna go over here and kind of tank and fight over there melee unit uh and you want to defend your portal right it's pretty basic i don't think i need to go super granular with that stuff the number one thing you need to know though we'll get back to the dps in a moment is you can restart any single battle with no cost to you that's so cool man i haven't played many games like that in this genre so what that allows you to do is because there's so many specific tiles and as you progress they're going to throw different enemies and different mechanics at you as well it can be a little confusing and maybe even a little bit intimidating when you start out a new level anywhere in this game but you can always strategize and i would go into battles already thinking that you're gonna restart a lot the first time that you see a new map or anything like that, right? So you just keep restarting and restarting and restarting, it's gonna cost you nothing. 
and then you're going to be able to really kind of, uh, you know, just mess around, experiment, right, with no cost to you. So that's the first thing you need to know about this game. Back to the DPS, right? Focus on building one team. I mean, this is pretty generic, but again, I'm assuming that some of you guys are coming to this game having never played a game in this genre before. So we should focus on upgrading uh, a, a hero that's doing a lot of damage. And then what we want to do is build a balanced team after we focus on that, after we identify whoever that first hero is. So let's say that we went with Brienne as our first uh, hero, right? So we want to focus on her. We want to star her up. Promotion is so huge in this game as well, right? So promoting these uh, heroes are going to give you big bonuses. Attack range boost, that's huge. Uh, basic attributes, but they're significant attribute upgrades. And then... Uh, eventually you're gonna oh, on the first one you'll get a new skill unlocked as well right so you want to focus on promotion we want to focus on just simply leveling them up to level 50 right once we have our whole first team to level 50 then we can focus on starting to get our first dps to level 60 again i would prioritize upgrades based on the damage dealt just straight up in this game right of course once we get to the mid game to the end game i'm sure things will change and there'll be exceptions to that rule but in the early game that's all you need to worry about identify your damage dealer and start upgrading okay so guys i just took a quick time out to promote some of the heroes that i have been neglecting and you can see the stat difference is well increased incredible right and even the player power or the hero power is noticeable when you go through and promote i promoted brienne to five stars i think she was at 15k now she's at 19k now a reminder to promote your champions all you have to do is go over to the raids go over to the promotion raid pretty obvious pretty intuitive identify which class of hero that you want to promote marksman mages endurance in this case for brienne i would want to go marksman and then you have to find out which insignia rarity that you need so sometimes you might have to go back a little bit i needed some uh, marksman two for example to get to the area or to get to two stars three stars uh and so on so that's basically how we go about promotion in this game now i'm sure a lot of you guys have questions about gear on champions i'm gonna have a specific dedicated video all about gear inside watcher of realms so su suffice it to say if you're coming from another game like this it's pretty intuitive uh attack speed uh, uh crit rate on your dps is going to be very very important crit damage after that rage regen is very powerful in this game as well but again expect a dedicated guide on all the different kind of gear sets which are best uh, for each heroes and so on and so forth coming very soon to the channel let's talk about what a balanced team should even look like in this game now every area is going to be a little bit different right we'll talk about campaign in a moment but you're gonna see that, man, there's 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 a lot to do. And 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 in each class, so to speak, again, the the, the mages, the marksmen, the uh the melee, they're all gonna have a different strength and weakness depending on the map, obviously. Uh, but generally speaking, what we wanna do is usually have, you know, two or three tanks, three tanks usually, two healers on our on our team, and then the rest will be mages and marksmen for DPS, right? So it will be pretty obvious early on. Rex, who we get, and he's part of the campaign, right? He's part of the tutorial. He's gonna be fine in the early game. He can be one of your one of your tanks, one of your melee units, right? So you should have again two or three of those ground melee units, and then it, early early game one healer. After that, two healers, right? The two healers that I use, and again, it's just gonna be depending on who you pull or whatever. But I use Mari, and I actually have a legendary. Uh, I have uh, Ezra, and this is kind of a little you know obvious tip for for new players but sometimes when you pull a, a, a hero uh and you don't do anything with their skills with their promotion or anything like that you might be pretty underwhelmed early on don't just get rid of the uh the, the hero or anything like that at least you know go uh consult the website there's a bunch of tier lists out there the game hasn't been a lot around for that long but there's still a lot of content out there so don't like judge a book by its cover so to speak with these heroes right i know that ezrin kind of sucked for me early on and now he's the man i mean he's my main carry in terms of my healers so 
again, we want to think about that whole team composition. Two healers, two or three ground units, the rest are going to be all range, right? It's nice to have a blend of mages for that AoE damage and marksmen as well. That's going to be something that we're going to be focusing on uh, in the very, very beginning of the game. After you get your whole team, your whole squad to level 50, then you can start by going by DPS to level 60. Tanks in this game, you can kind of save them for last and healers kind of for last. Not that they're not important, but you'll get better dividend, better yield on your resources and your time by focusing on those marksmen and those mages first to get those up to 50 and then 60 first. Now we're talking about campaign. Here's a mistake that I made that I can help you guys avoid. I wasted a lot of stamina, which is called energy and raid if you're coming from that channel, right? I wasted a lot of stamina on gear. And that was a big mistake that you guys can avoid in the early game. So what, what do I mean by that gear? Well, don't we need gear? Yes, we do. There's six gear you know, slots per, per hero in this game. And you can see there's gear raid one, two, and three. We get bangles, amulets, and rings from gear raid two and three, and we get weapons and breastplates from gear raid one, okay? This gear are, are great, obviously, right? Uh, and now I am starting to spend more time, a little bit more time uh, farming it. However, in the beginning, this gear really sucks, and you're just gonna be essentially wasting your stamina on that. Instead, what you should do in the beginning is focus mainly on getting through campaign, promotion, right, upgrading our, our heroes, and getting experience okay so those are the big things in the early game and and then where are you getting your gear you're getting your gear in the shop in the dwarven association there's actually some pretty good gear and it just keeps getting better as you progress in the game too so you can get way better gear and and look at how much this gold this costs right this game throws a lot of gold at you way more than you need in the early game of course you're gonna blow through it once you get to the mid game as as these games tend to be right but they throw a lot at you a lot of gold there's plenty of gold to just go ahead and start buying your gear instead of actually wasting your stamina to get crappy gear that you're gonna be you're gonna wear it out and you're gonna move on to better gear in a month's time if not less i personally don't even bother with any rare gear in this game you know even in the early game i i, I upgraded a bunch of rare gear and i kind of I kind of regret it. I mean, there's no reason to do it because you outgrow it pretty quickly compared to other games in this genre. So again, in the early game, we're focused on promotion. You might not know what to focus on. Do I go marksman, mages, endurance, melee? What am I doing here? Well, as we said, find out who your best DPS is and focus on that first. And then after that, you can kind of just spread the love a little bit, right? You can just kind of go marksman mages and make sure you're not kind of slacking elsewhere. And you can also treat it as an as needed type of thing if you don't mind, right? Sometimes when we summon a, uh, a new hero, we get excited and we want the resources already ready. Uh, summoning, you don't have to stress that much in the, you know, obviously open what they give you, but they give you a lot, you know, like you're getting a lot of really solid heroes, as I said, to progress just fine without having to stress out to get all the best legendaries right out the gate. I would almost, you know, do a little bit of summoning, but not like stress it out. And, and certainly I wouldn't buy a bunch of, of summoning stones because, well, Again, you want to focus on one team, not three teams, you know, in the early game. So I, I would really just kind of hold off in terms of summoning personally. So in terms of kind of a stretch goal, meaning like, what are you even working towards, right? Again, campaign, right? And this game is very cool in that like, anytime you run into a wall in campaign, it usually means it's time to focus on another area of the game, right? You can focus on, you know, upgrading, getting some gold, buying some better uh, gear. And of course, you can dabble in the gear raids if you want to. Of course, you're not going to ruin anything or ruin your account. I just wouldn't like go overboard auto farming them overnight or something like that just for a bunch of gear that you're not going to want in a little bit, right? In terms of these chapters, right? You can see here I am in, in, in chapter eight. Uh, but what you really want to try to get to is is chapter seven and eight to open up these these uh xp areas these xp dungeons that's where the the yield so to speak the dividend of your your stamina is at its best by far your xp per stamina is going to be tremendous when you get to seven and eight especially uh so and nine right so we really don't want to go like super crazy with xp raids either 
in the early game until we get to seven and eight or nine, you know? Uh, and when we're able to clear that content in campaign, then we're gonna get way better bang for our buck. And we're actually gonna be able to farm some substantial XP that will benefit us in the future, okay? But in, before then, I, I don't think you really necessarily need to go on chapter two an XP farm all night long and waste a bunch of stamina. Nah, just keep progressing, upgrading, progressing, upgrading, progressing, upgrading, get XP as you need it, but don't go crazy stockpiling. Wait till you get to the better stages where it's, again, it's gonna be way better bang for your buck and your, your time, especially, right? You may be asking, what do I do if I hit a wall in campaign, Ash? Well, it's simple. You can see I'm doing it right now. I just started doing it on my fresh account here. And that is just change your difficulty and go back to chapter one one again right so you can go to hard and then eventually you will unlock expert so if you hit a wall you can't progress any further in campaign well simply go ahead and start back again the rewards will be better especially on hard mode than normal mode so just keep progressing and if you run into that wall just go ahead and reset on the next difficulty setting from the beginning so last thing i want to mention guys is of course the tide even the very very beginning of of watcher of realms you do want to focus on using your tide battles you get three of them a day every single day tide talents are so incredibly powerful guys uh i'm not going to go through them all we'll save that for the next guide but you can't go wrong in the early game too it, it's pretty self-explanatory we just want to work our way down you'll progress pretty quickly right so tide talents and tide in general you get amazing rewards you get all the tide talents you do want to do this every single day super important the arena is not crucial in the in the early game but i would dabble in it a little bit the nice thing in the arena is you know depending on the challenge it's going to tell you exactly what you want to use aoe dps mages and they give you some suggestions right so it's nice that they have that there so the final tip that i have for you guys before i let you go today is the you can see it up here the xp bonus so exp bonus is going to grant you 100 percent extra experience it is crucial to use this obviously i mean it's doubling your exp right which is very very important going to save you a lot of time uh so in, they give you a few of these in the very beginning of the game but as you progress you can actually have obtain them both in the diamond shop for 150 diamonds a good use of diamonds especially when you're going to be using a lot of stamina so you're not sure what to use your diamonds on well there's an option for you right there you can also and it's another good reason to play in the arena you can go to the door of an association go to the arena shop and it will appear there getting an exp bonus uh, as well if you don't have one again you don't need them all the time but when you're going to use a significant amount of stamina you should be using the exp bonus so guys i hope this kind of oriented you in the early game gave you kind of some goals right to get to uh, we want to clear a campaign open up campaign uh eight and nine in terms of the uh the xp dungeons and uh you know build our first team what well, we you, you heard all the advice thank you for watching till the end of the video guys if you have any other recommendations suggestions maybe something i missed that you should, i should include in the next video i'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below much love and as always take care guys